basic disc selection. These three discs you're looking at represent the three core types of golf discs out there. You have putters, mid-ranges, and then drivers. Putters are the slowest, they have the least distance potential, but they're also the easiest to throw accurately. Putters are definitely where I recommend you start as a, as a beginning disc golfer. Just get a putter, learn how to throw that, and then move on from there. Stepping up from the putter is the mid-range. This is an Innova G-Star Wombat. These three discs are just representatives of the type. Obviously, there are a ton of different options out there. I reviewed and talked about many different options on my channel. You can go back and look through a lot of that stuff, but G-Star Wombat. Lots of glide on this disc, which means it'll hold that line and keep floating down the fairway for you and let you get really nice distance as a beginner. This is a great beginner disc. Then you have a beginner driver like this. This is the Latitude 64 Jade. It's part of the easy to use line by Latitude 64 and this one is a great option. That's something that's generally lightweight which is good for drivers for beginners but I do recommend staying away from drivers for your first few rounds. Just throw your putter for a little bit, maybe step it up to a mid-range and just you know kind of get comfortable with those and learn the basics with those discs and then step it up to a driver and see if you can start stretching out some more distance. Those are the three basic types of golf discs. Let's talk about how to grab them and how to throw them. How do I grip the disc? This is a tough question because everybody grips the disc in a slightly different way. No two grips are exactly the same. There's tons of different variations and you can be effective with almost all of them. There's no necessarily right or wrong way to grip the disc. The power grip is when you have all four of your fingers on this inside rim. Generally you want to tuck the to middle two and then these two are just kind of flat on that rim. Then when it comes over to the top, you have your thumb straight across the top there. You want to kind of avoid putting your thumb too far towards the middle or too far towards the edge. So you want it kind of right in the middle there. You can basically like pinch it in between your index finger and your thumb if that feels comfortable. There are variations on whether you want to have in, in that little fatty part of your hand there or more just directly in the crease of your palm. Try both, see what feels more comfortable, see what seems more successful and go from there. The fan grip, generally used for more of an accuracy type throw with a putter or mid-range, but some people use fan grips for all shots and they can still get great distance out of it. The fan grip is uh, different from the power grip. As you can see, your middle two fingers are actually more extended onto the flight plate, which gives you a little bit more control over the angle. If you're holding it in a power grip, you can see it's a little bit more floppy, and you throw it down in, uh, into the fan grip there, and it has a little bit more control. Generally, fan grip is used more for accuracy type throws with putters and mid-ranges, but some players will use fan grips for all shots. Whatever grip you use to drive and throw shots, you're probably going to switch it up when you get inside the circle and it's time to putt. For me, I will use uh, this type of grip here where it's a much more fanned out grip. My uh, three fingers on the flight plate, this finger kind of curling around that, around the rim there, right in that first knuckle. I'll put some pressure in between my thumb and the fingers on the underside of the flight plate and that will help me propel the disc forward when I'm putting. So, uh, you know, some people will put their finger across the top like this. If that's what works for you, then do it. You know, again, putting is extremely, uh, you know, personal thing and there's lots of different ways to get to get the job done. Pretty sure it starts here, hole one. One of the first things you can do is inspect the sign on the tee pad. They will give you a lot of information, particularly what the rules of this hole may be. It also gives you an indication of where the next tee might be, how far the basket is from the tee pad that you're throwing from. Be sure to inspect each sign so you can find out if you're playing the hole correctly. The object of this game is very similar to ball golf. You want to take your disc and get it as close to the basket or in as possible in the least amount of throws. The objective is to put the disc into the basket. The amount of throws it takes to get there really is a good indication of your skill level. And as a brand new beginner, you should not be worried about that. The number one rule is have fun. If you're having fun, it does not matter how many strokes it takes to get there. Honestly, you're out here in the park, you're getting some fresh air, a little sunshine in your face, it's a good time. Rule number two, be courteous. Be courteous to the park, the environment, the people. If there's somebody in the fairway where you're throwing, be courteous enough to either wait for them to pass. If they don't have an indication that you're there, try to wave them on. And then when you walk by, they're gonna ask, what is that? Because they probably don't have any idea what this is and you can explain to them. 
So now I've inspected the course, I've inspected the sign. I know it should take me three strokes to hit par for this hole. My DX Leopard, and because it has a tendency to veer to the right because of how strong I throw it, I'm gonna put a bit of a hyzer on it. It's called a hyzer, basically it's an angle. I'm gonna release the disc at a slight angle instead of a flat angle because the disc will naturally go this way anyhow. Because my first throw got so close to the basket, I'm only gonna use my putter here. If you feel comfortable throwing your putter from about 40 feet in, go for it. If you need a little bit more power, use your mid-range. What you wanna do is just make sure that each throw you throw Get you closer to the basket. The only way you can do that is by practicing, having a little bit of patience, having fun. Take it one shot at a time. The shot that you're throwing right now is the most important shot of the round. And once it's thrown and it lands, there's nothing you can do. You can't take it back. All you can do is move forward. Get up back to your lie, focus, concentrate, and throw that next shot as good as you can. The only shot that matters is the shot that you're throwing right now. Just a little short. Story of my life. Keep it simple. Throw the shot that you're comfortable with. Throw the shot that you're confident with. Don't try anything too wacky and don't try to be a hero and try to throw some miraculous shot out of the woods and through a tiny gap and get back out to the fairway. Sometimes you gotta take your medicine, pitch your disc back out into an open spot and progress from there. Don't always feel like you have to try to get it in the basket. A lot of times you're better off just trying to put it very close to the basket. A lot of times if you try to run a long putt or try to throw it in from a long distance, you're gonna end up farther away than you feel comfortable in terms of putting. I'm at least 100 feet behind the basket. The basket's actually located right behind the tree. My drive went a little bit low, so I got this much distance between me and my next shot. So this is a perfect opportunity to at least show you the mid-range. I'm gonna use my DX Rock because it's stable. Stable means it's going to fly straight for me and I can count on it. I'm gonna throw it just a little bit to the right of that tree is where I'm gonna aim in hopes of it to fade just gently left The benefits of disc golf are tremendous. I mean, not only are you getting a walk in the park, working your lymphatic system, look at me all scientist and shit, huh? <laughs> You're also being able to meet new people, explore your own neighborhood, and honestly, there's no substitute for that. What time is it? I love that little segment. What time is it? What do you guys think of that? Leave a comment in the section below and let me know if you like that. That little segment is so rad. Anyway, this week's winner of the two DX Rocks goes to, I hope I pronounced this right, bro, Xander Zaritzit. I don't know if I got it right. If I got close, let me know in the comments below, but you are the winner. Please contact me with a private message and I will send you your two discs as promised. Thanks for being a subscriber. I appreciate you leaving comments. It's really great to have so you. This week, we're doubling down. That's right. We're giving away a DX Rock again. This time, we're going to give one to one of the Disc Off Nerd subscribers and one to Tuck Force One subscribers. What you have to do is subscribe to both channels, like each video, and comment in the section below hashtag nerdforce1 nerd n-e-r-d the number four the letter s and the number one you got it next week we'll be revealing the name of who won for each channel from both the disc off nerd and myself we thank you so much for subscribing being a part of this community and helping us grow the sport of disc golf peace